What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. I'm your regular host, Scott Weatherly. And we're on for another bonus episode. Uh, I'm here joined by INJ, INJ Colbard, who from now on I'm just going to be referring to as Colbard. We've already discussed it. Don't worry, I'm not being rude. Uh, uh, and I'm here to talk about his uh, new book, uh, and I'm going to butcher the thing, and I'm probably going to butcher more than this, but uh, he's just told me, Salamandre. Am I closer? Salamandre. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an, yeah, Salamander, if you like. Salamander. It yeah. <laughs> it makes it um, easier. So it it's, 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 a, it's your new graphic novel uh, yeah. coming from Burger Books, or Burger Books, and it's um, it's an interesting book. Burger. We'll, we'll, Burger books. I'm pull you up on every pronunciation. Yeah, that's what that's it. That's what I'm worried now. I'm going to go through this book. There's basically sort of like a mix of French and English. It. Yeah. <laughs> every time I'm going to I'm going to refer to a page and be like, give me a second, just to make sure I've read it properly. <laughs> um, this is the book of uh, a young a young boy, sort of te- young teenage boy, who uh, and I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do any spoilers, but experiences a sort of. Um, an event in his life, and, and because of that event, which I suppose you sort of have to talk about a little bit, but he then goes to spend a summer with his grandfather in a very different culture. Uh, and yeah. it, it's very much a sort of a almost like a, it is a coming of age sort of story, isn't it? A sort of a self realization yeah. story and, and and deals with certain aspects. Um, <clears throat> and I suppose, really, if you want if the first act sort of turning point, I'm, I'm quite talk about it, is sort of like you know, the event that happens with his father. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm quite happy to say I don't know. I don't want to spoil it because I don't, it's, it's it's not a surprise, is it? Because no, the rest of the book is... no, no, it's in the blurb on the back. Of I was going to say, yeah, it's in... so his father sort of young dies boy and... loses his father, and yeah, yeah. So it's the death of his That's father, fine. and it's, so the story is really about him sort of dealing with the grief, um, but also sort of finding one of the things I was, I was, I was quite I will shut up about a minute, but <laughs> it obviously deals with the, the loss of his father, so it could just be a straight grief story. But there's this thing of like. He then sort of gets introduced into almost like the, the the realities of the world. I mean, this is a fantasy world. It's set in a, in a different sort of, you know universe. But there's not, it just sort of without being bombastic, it just keeps throwing ideas at this kid who's sort of like. And yeah. now we're going to talk about this, you know, this <clears throat> divided country. The fact that we're going to go on past it past this border and see this completely sort of separate yeah. culture. And we're going to talk about art and we're going to talk about resistance and we're going to talk about it's all like. <clears throat> corruption and secret police. And I'm just like, my God, but none of it's bombastic. Like it's not punchy punchy. It's not wow bang. It's sort of like it's a it's a, a quiet sort mm-hmm. of like uh reflection. Uh, and it, it it sort of yeah it was it was fascinating. But <clears throat> all of that coming round to what inspired yeah. this story? <laughs> well it was um <clears throat> well it's drawn it it's essentially semi-autobiographical mm-hmm. in a large because it does actually take events from my own childhood like lock stock completely yeah and um sort of readdresses that rather than sort of change the names uh, to present pretty whatever it's sort of changed the entire thing you know yeah. it's, it's the, the big thing about it really is that it's it looks at memory mm. and the fact that when we sort of tell a story we kind of we confabulate the story but you know, there's been research done in which um, you know the more emotional the event, the more the more vivid it is as a memory in your mind. And so, fundamentally, what memories technically are, are really emotions. Mm. And when we're telling the story to somebody else, the reason we, I think, that we confabulate is because whoever you're telling it to, you're trying to put across the emotion. You're trying to articulate emotion, and that's why you sort of embellish or you know, it depends on the retelling. We do yes. retell memories from scratch fundamentally. Mm. We do kind of rebuild it as we sort of tell it. And so it looks at that as it being a kind of act of imagination to basically remember something mm. itself. So there was that. 
And so I looked at, because I thought loads of times about doing stuff about my childhood because I grew up on both sides of the Iron Curtain, two different cultures. I'm bilingual, um, you know, and I have these two heritages that I come from and they're quite distinctly different. Well, they certainly were back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. The one very Western, one very Eastern in terms of the, that divide of that border, the East and the West. And, um, but I also had family who were um, involved in the resistance during the Second World War. I had in Poland mm -hmm. and I had family who were involved in uh, solidarity movements during the, during the Cold War. And so fundamentally that there was a lot of, stories about people but nothing you could actually confirm or ask or you know that sort of thing so you learned about family members and their activities but you couldn't really back any of that up because it's all about secrecy especially yes, yeah, that's the point yeah they don't sort of yeah, pull out a so, book and be like well here's all the things we did here's the rules of how yeah, we did it and yeah. so it became a different difficult thing to relate to so i thought about memory as emotion instead mm. and so what i was looking to do was to write about the emotional impact of that and i remember when I actually started this book, this book came out of a failing previous pitch and I'd completely screwed up that pitch. And I got to, I mean, the, the basic idea had got through and Karen and I were talking about that pitch and mm. we, we were like getting excited about it. And then I went away to write it and, and I was writing a breakdown of the whole thing and it just fell apart. It just mm. wasn't working at all. And I couldn't figure that out. And what I was trying to tap into was emotion. And I remember a conversation with my sister my older sister, who's a writer as well, she um, she said, take an event from your childhood. And in this particular instance, it's the finale of the book, the mm -hmm. big thing that happens at the end. <laughs> and she said, and use that as the end of your story and work backwards from that. And that was the principle of it. And it was really about figuring out when you know what the finale is, one why a, why an adult would have thought that that was a good idea <laughs> like yeah, things like that so yeah. there was different things and i think it, maybe the reason for it was this and we do know this and and i essentially sort of confabulated the story backwards from that which essentially became me talking about stuff like grief and mm -hmm. art the politics of it as well the situation over there in a very kind of matter of fact having lived it sort of way you know so yeah it was, it was drawing on those things. And for years, I tried to figure out how to do that because of that whole thing of being your own unreliable narrator when you consider your own past, you know, and just being, and also I've grown up from two different cultures. And, um, you know, when in England, um, I was always considered Polish and in Poland, I was always considered English. I don't, I don't have that thing where it's like, I belong to either of them really. But the concept is, in my head, is I'm not one or the other. I'm both. Mm. And that's the bit people really struggle with, because you're either one thing or the other. No, I'm both of them. So you're, yeah, you're, like, a, you're a child of two cultures, aren't you? That sort of thing. Yeah, mm. I'm, a, I'm a mix of the two. So trying to find a way, but it also means that when I'm writing about one or the other, I find it hard to articulate that as somebody genuinely mm. there from that culture <laughs> of either one, because I'm kind of like this third other culture. It's a mix of those two cultures. So I found a way to, and that's partly why the, the um, why the setting is the way that it is, mm. was because I was trying to find a way to articulate that specifically as well, what that's like, and the language in it. Um, you know, like we were saying about the title, um, because of the fact that growing up with speaking two different languages, I remember somebody saying to me once, "Do you?" Um, translate on the fly in your head <laughs> it's like no <laughs> i have a much bigger vocabulary that's all it is i've just got like several words for the same thing and you know and they they can make you think differently as well i mean when i say um apple in english it's green but if i say apple and that's a polish for apple it's red right so in my mind's eye these are they are different be thinking. yeah so i think differently in these two different languages and um so it's really kind of trying to explore that and to convey that. And then also talking about real things like, you know, um, losing a parent and and things, that, you know, of that nature. And also losing the impetus to create work and that kind of thing as well. So, that, yeah, yeah. That, that was actually really interesting because I say that the book starts with, I mean, the, the, 
the young boy, um, yeah, who is the who's the main character. Like you know, he writes his. I like this fact. Like he lionizes or iconography. You know, he iconizes his father as this sort of yeah. Um, um, and obviously, I think it's, it's, the book is sort of dedicated to to your father in that same similar way. Yeah. But, in that, he's that sort of like Jacques Cousteau kind of character, isn't he? Sort of like adventure of the sea, yeah. and and um, <clears throat> I like the fact that he, you know, he makes his father sort of this this hero, this sort of, uh, and like you say, once that there's a, there's a line um, when, they, when she, he meets his other artist, and she sort of says, oh, "Have you lost your muse?" Yeah, and <laughs> it's a real sort of like you know, because he's it's, you know, it's a really like, Oof, yeah, that's a, a gut punch because he has and. Yeah. What I like is, is he this, doesn't know either. <laughs> no, but he hasn't realised it until that sort of point. Yeah, yeah. There's these interesting moments, and so you know that when that, you know he starts to sort of uh, address that. But the other thing, I, this character, it's like making the comics. It seems I don't want to say childish because it's not because we've all still do, do these things. But like that way, yeah, yeah. that is that is that child's way of sort of translating or young person's sort of way of translating the world into something like we said, look more bombastic and more exciting. Yeah. And as I look, what I like through this book is, it sort of um, it never go, it never tries to show. Oh, that's what the real world is like. It could, you know, there's no car chase, or there's no big event. Like that's always kept in this comic world. Um, but he meets people, and it shows the complexity of people as well. Like the comic book shows heroes and villains. Like, you know, there's a monster and there's a hero, and it's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in the book, and again, I don't want to get into two things to, to spoil it. But the, he meets this character on the train who yeah. works for. Um, potentially, the, well, really, it's like the secret police. He works for the government that lives yeah. the, from the other side of this, the veil, which I love this concept of being behind, but beyond the veil. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, obviously, the spiritual sort of side, spiritualistic or the spiritualism side of that. But yeah. this guy who sort of starts off grumpy, then sort of realizes who he is, they make this connection over art and they have these discussions mm. and he leaves. But there's a moment where he's like, you find that he's searching for this lost art. There's been a war. Again, you don't really know much about it, but there's been this war. This art's been lost and he's finding it. And you think it's going to be like, because he's such an, you've, you've learned he's a nice person. He's, he's doing this thing. Oh, he's going to save this art. And he just leaves it on this thing where he's like, well, what's going to happen to it? Well, what was supposed to happen to it? It's going to be destroyed. And you just yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh, people are really complex. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and there's, other characters, there's other characters like that throughout where you're just like, oh, yeah, no, people are multi layered. Like they don't. Yeah. And and I love that, that this kid just keeps meeting these people, like, you know, like, um, uh, on a, he's not going to quest, but it's like a saga just for this summer of just keep, like, you know, everything sort of keeps confronting him. And it's, yeah. um, wonderful the way sort of like you see it from that, that point of view. I don't want to say a child's point of view because it's not. It's quite a child, but that young person's point of view of just the world keeps presenting him as saying, like, it ain't that simple, it ain't that easy. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and so, yeah it's that. that thing of it's that thing of growing up when I was saying it's like when people think you're one thing or the other, mm. I've grown up being two things, mm. and so you know, I did, I've never viewed the world as being some, something as simple as that. There's so many gray areas in every person that you meet as well, and especially when coming from a background of people that were effectively you know keeping their own secrets and stuff you had to understand a certain degree of that complexity in a person as well from a very early age but mm. it was the i think um i mean that incident uh, incident on the train that actually happened but not in a uh, not in the context of the story if that makes sense if you strip away the story there yeah. was a guy once when i was traveling because i traveled from very early age uh, i think the earliest was we used to travel as kids on our own Oh, and wow. so we'd go across to Eastern Europe um, oh, completely on our own. And I think I was as young as 11 or 12 or mm -hmm. somewhere around that hazy bracket of somewhere that around that age where I kind of, um, where I went completely on my own from Liverpool Street Station. I would catch a, um, catch a train to Harwich and then catch a boat that was a six hour journey to Hooker Holland. And then you get off the boat and you get on a, Russian PKS train on his big old diesel yeah, yeah. Uh, headed for, and then that would go through what was a ghost station and they really I think they really were called ghost stations that's what I've got in my memory because mm -hmm. they were called ghost stations they were ghost stations ghost station just meant you don't get off you get you, you know it's not an active station but it used to be so that pulls up in Berlin uh, we did get things like mm. people emptying out the carriage and you'd have to stand on the platform mm -hmm. or barking dogs, people with guns. That was pretty normal. And then uh, you get back on the train once they've done an on-the-spot inspection and then you head on your way. 
and it was midnight when you hit there and it was the west was all like neon lights and stuff the minute you got in the east it was just pitch black till dawn yeah you know so it was it was an unbelievable it, it really was like going through a curtain and um but this is from a train you know mm-hmm. from being mm-hmm. on a train so there were no lights really as you were going along maybe the odd little tiny badly lit station <laughs> you know with one little lamp outside it's somewhere <laughs> in the middle of nowhere but but fundamentally it was just yeah it was pitch black all the way till dawn but that sort of journey as a kid yeah and i remember once getting on the train um i was very young and there was a guy who basically put all his luggage on my berth <clears> and it and I'd, and didn't have and he was quite rude he's very different to Thibaut Bondicou yeah. in the story it, this guy was uh quite aggressive and <laughs> I had to really take but I mean that whole journey as well what I didn't realize until much later was that as a kid I felt like I was traveling on my own but it was done through a company so wherever you got off and got on there was always someone there ticking your name off on a box right you know oh he's he's reached this point that he's yeah. still alive. So <laughs> get to the next I mean, this is the this is what it was like in the 80s i guess you know 70s and 80s but yeah i used to travel train or plane or or by car we used to go quite often you know so it was and those sorts of experiences when i came home at the end of the summer and we always had to say what we were doing that we'd done that summer i'd done mad stuff like that you know as a, <laughs> as a kid <laughs> so i was like Oh yeah, I was stood on a platform with guns pointed at me. <laughs> You're reading that out. This week, when you go back to school, the teachers are like, "What did you do this?" So here's your essay about what wow. you did in the summer, and everyone was like, "Well, I went was picnicking," a... and you were like, yeah. <laughs> "I was on a solidarity march and dancing and <laughs> fired plastic bullets at the crowd and stuff." <laughs> so it was quite, yeah. It was like my sister said, "It's not like your childhood was, uh, you know, inactive." Mm-hmm. So. Um, it was a lot to draw on, but there were tons. I mean, there's loads of stuff, but this is the stuff that was I was able to put piece this together with, was pulling on all those sorts of things. And I remember as well going to Holland, for example. I used to love the idea that if when we were traveling by bus, we'd always stop at service stations in, um, in Germany and places like that, or traveling by car. And I used to love going in the stores and the very fact that everything was kind of like it is in Britain. But, but a little yeah. bit different. Yeah, yeah. So in my mind, I used to pretend I was in a in a parallel universe, just to entertain myself as a kid. I'd just go, and I'm in this world now, where they have <laughs> different kinds of bags for stuff. And yeah, so I was always looking at the world in a slightly skewed way, and so that really informed the look of this as well, because mm. I wanted it to be. It is a fantasy version of uh, it's sort of it's more in the flavor of the Ruritanian romance, which is what. Um, prisoner of zender is where it's like a fictional country in central europe so mm. but i was trying to make it like uh it was it was recognizable enough yes so like when you're reading it it's not alienating fantasy it's like oh there's a car and you know, things like that you know? well it's it sort of yeah. it, it, it's our world just yeah one to the side Skewed a little bit yeah one to the left yeah. or one to the right sort of thing it's it's yeah and even like you say the politics and everything it sort of feels like you say the thing is it's not it's not f- 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 <clears throat> removed to be un- unrecognizable. Like it's, I'm going through this. Yeah. I was reading this in, you know, sort of the historical context, like you know, like you said, the yeah. Iron and all that's there. Um, <laughs> yeah. One, one thing that's curious, yeah, and I do, no, because what I didn't want to do there was like actually, because that in of itself, if I was to do a book and it was set in Eastern Europe, and that's a lot of baggage to unpack right there. Yes. Whereas if you take it in a fantasy context, you can kind of you can do something recognizable because we're not going to talk about that in massive detail you know so therefore it becomes something that's in service to the story rather than the story in service to history really yeah you know, that, so i wasn't interested in doing that really but yeah i, I see what you mean because it, it, it sort of exists it's the world mm. they exist in it's not the story that you're telling yeah um and i like the fact that it is and and i was you know because that's what that's what drives a lot of these characters like you meet these characters and they mm. exist be, these characters and their motivations exist because of the world they live in yeah. um but the world is is almost it's a, it's a stage and but they are the players that we are following and i like that um and i'm not yeah. going to go on about all of them because there's so many where i'm just like and they're cool and they're cool um but, <laughs> but there's events there's events in particular that i felt um i'm going to talk about this there's two i, just, I do want to just quickly mention there's, there's a silent party 
Um, yeah. They have a silent celebration because beyond the veil, they're not really supposed to sort of have music and all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's it's so it feels so sort of real that that's the kind of thing that a family would do. Like, because the kids yeah. are like, with the kids are like, well, what are you doing? It's like, well, we can't really have music, but we can, we can dance and we can do this and that. And it's sort of like, yeah. it's all very, um, it feels in this world, it feels authentic. Like I can imagine, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you were to add it into historical context, if you were to consider sort of like World War II or let's like say being behind yeah. the Iron Curtain, like it feels authentic. Um, so that was that. You'd, that think, f- blitz, you'd think something blitz like that meant, would happen. Blitz, wouldn't you? Exactly. Look, it feels exactly of that time. Like. Um, uh, and the other one though is um, you, you mentioned obviously the the traversing of the border. Um, yeah. But the the other one is when he first meets like his grandfather as well. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the closest it gets to being, um. An action scene, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I, but I like it with like you have this almost like um, there's a, the the character the, they're driving through. He's, he uses some like little bangers to sort of get through a crowd, which I like. I thought it's really you know, but you you instantly get this feeling like that in that moment, the grandfather's like an agitator. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and there's because there's, there's like he's he's sort of like welcoming, but there's that real like, undercurrent of like. Yeah, temper or something, and it's sort of like it yeah. puts me, it, it put me on edge a little bit, right? And reading, I was like, mm-hmm. is this going to be like some weird thing of like he's a villain or like, I don't know? Like, it, it's good, but like yeah. that moment of them meeting again, seeing it from a child's eyes or the young person's eyes when he hasn't seen this person for years yeah. and they're not traveling on their own, and I was just like, yeah, I feel really sorry for him. <laughs> like, this is who yeah. he's, got, he's trusted to, and it's this sort of like slight older maniac driving through traffic but um yeah yeah those two sort have... of like really felt authentic and, and real to me in that sort of world he was lifted complete mm. whole cloth from my perception of my grandfather at mm. the time he, he even looks like him and he rides down to the moccasins on his feet and the, you know the, the snapdragons in his pockets and all that kind of stuff he was very um he was very much a joker and it was like, but it can be unnerving because it was like at the same time it's never serious and like, um, but a little bit worrying because it's <laughs> put it that way. But he was, yeah, always a practical joker and stuff like that. He definitely was in in his life. Um, but um, and all he could cook was pancakes, and he always made cherry vodka all the time. And, <laughs> and he did live in he lived in the sh- the the shack that he lives in in it that's identical to where he actually he had two oh, wow. in the city but he spent most of his time because he actually grew clematis in mm. in the, the grounds is mapped from memory on exactly the same location mm-hmm. as where he was and like where my aunt would live as well across the way from him is mapped exactly to that as well oh really i was gonna say yeah, yeah the real places in my head the real remembered places. because the other thing about the past in this is I wanted to convey a sort of misremembered past mm-hmm. in that mm. way that we confabulate memories, you know? Yeah. But with this, I kind of, the location, the corner plot and, you know, and then the other house as well is very much mapped on the actual house that it, that was there and and the way that they, an entire family lived on the top floor of this villa and then there's another one underneath and he would be in this little shack and it was like, a, with the difference being it was like a corrugated roof, I think at the time as well. But the layout, the minute you walk in through the door, lounge exactly. area, to the left was the kitchen and the bathroom, and to the right was the bedroom, and that's exactly what it was like. And it was tiny, and it, you know, but it was all he needed, really. You know, it was mm. like a moon, he was in the way, that element of him was a bit like a Moomin's character, who was quite happy <laughs> in this little spot. And, just like, you know. yeah, like a womble, just sort of like happy in his, happy yeah. in the world. Um, on that, though, one of the sort of, you know, those sort of last questions is, is you, you've, relayed how uh quite vividly obviously how this is sort of like you know semi autobiographical and you sort of you know related yeah. it and said so you've lived through it. were there moments when you were writing or um you know drawing this when you had to stop when you were just like 
this is hitting home or it's triggering yeah. it's triggering memories or something was this any moment yeah, you, were, oh, big time, you, yeah. you had to like call someone to be like your sister or someone it was, so was there like times like that i did yeah i had two moments in the book when that happened there was one was when he met the grandfather for the first time yeah I genuinely didn't think this was going to happen or be a problem when I wrote it. But when I came to draw on that, it suddenly hit home what I was doing. And what I did was when he first meets him, he in the book, in the book, he had his hands behind his back in the way that my grandfather used to stand all the time. Mm. And I drew him like that. And I just and it made me really, really emotional. I stopped what I was doing and just went. Okay, not going to draw him like that then. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's no point in the book where he actually stands with his hands behind his back because it was just too much. Like, mm. And I sat there and thought, wow, that's weird. <laughs> the other one, which is a, bit, a lot more emotional, was me realizing by the end, there was a, uh, a point where I was... A, I think it's always... So often when I've been doing books in the past, people will say, you know, did you, do you feel like you do you feel happy with it and stuff like that and you kind of yeah and then you kind of look at it and you think oh i wish i could change this and i wish i could change that it's just the normal part of the process mm. but if somebody said that about this i would say 100 percent yes because there was something i'd learned about myself that was pretty big by the end of the book when i'd done it uh, but also it made me go back in and change tweak a couple of bits to to hang better because i understood it better yeah and then I was able to go in and alter those bits so that it actually lined up with what I was trying to say because I got what I was trying to say. I'd been trying to say it all the way through the book. Mm. There's just enough words for what it was. And I was trying to figure that bit out. And, uh, and so I came back in and I, just, I suddenly realized what this is. And what it was was it was drawing a scene with my dad in it and quite different to him. My dad didn't pass away because he was in a submarine and stuff like that. Passed away. It was a very different sort of setup. Um, but I lost him, you know, through divorce at a young age. And then he died before I got to meet him when I was an adult. Mm -hmm. um, but what was, that's why in the story, he technically isn't dead because he's just trapped in a submarine. And that is that whole thing of a dad that you can't see, basically. Yes. You're never going to see. And so it was that revelation there. But I didn't think I'd have a problem because my memories of him, part of the reason it's is the way it is is because he was i was very young when he, he'd left the picture and so i don't have memories of him mm. and for years i just assumed that i didn't mm. right so I, for absolutely ages i just kind of thought that i didn't have any memories at all i remember going to his funeral and i'd always been told i looked like him and so of course imagine what that's like i rock up at his funeral everybody's looking at me thinking he's shown up for his own funeral <laughs> <laughs> Because we were properly estranged, you know, we had no contact at all. And then, um, but what was odd was going around this wake afterwards and hearing people talking about him. Because mm. I realized I had no memories of him at all. And there's a line in the book that comes up, and uh, oh, I won't go over that because I realize where it is the line. But I was, I, but I got to a point where I was just drawing his scene, and um, and then I'd finished, and like I'd finished coloring it. And I suddenly broke down. So I suddenly realized what I'd just done. And then it was that, and it took me weeks to finish this one bit. I kept, I kept going off and doing other parts of the book because I just couldn't finish this bit. Mm. And I suddenly realized that I just didn't want to. Because in that period of time, he was like he was there. Yeah. And then it made me, and then, it, then I realized that at that moment, I did have memories of him because all because they were emotional memories mm. the fact that i love my dad and you know i might not have like a a scene in my head of sitting around a table with him or something like that my memories of him aren't like that they're actually just purely emotional memories yes and that's what the book gave me because i had for years assumed i had nothing and i do have something and so yeah by the end of it it made sense to dedicate it to him completely in memory of because mm -hmm. it, is, it is a it's a memory yeah <laughs> i just yeah. didn't realize you know it's bizarre so i think if somebody said you know you're happy with the book you know if if you can get something out of the art that you create like that it's worth doing you know mm. so it's a, it's worth talking about as well it's very openly talking about it but it's something we all grief is something we all experience at some point you know that's a shared common universal truth that you're talking about it's okay to talk about it you know it's like you know so i feel comfortable with it but it was just it was overwhelming at the time when it happened yeah. I was like, oh my God. I suddenly realized what i'm doing this is like 
okay got it now but it was brilliant because it also gave me the answer to what the book was about you know fundamentally you know mm. which is memory you know what it is you know <clears throat> I know it is, and I love to hear that. I mean, that you know, it's, it's almost like a, a catharsis, like it released something that, that yeah, sort of, you know. So that's uh... yeah. Carrie Fisher once said, uh, Meryl Streep quoted at the awards after she passed away, and it was when she was filming Postcards in the Edge, and Carrie Fisher apparently said to, to Meryl Streep, she said, uh, "Take your broken heart and turn it into art," which I think is absolutely fantastic. Really mm. good quote. I love, I love that. that. That's yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. just, just some of the topics. I'm not going to go into everything because there's there's so much to explore in this book. I mean, you know, you talk about yeah. this thing of turning turn into art. I mean, the, the art as as the the yeah. words of but as art as passion, resistance, propaganda, you know, yeah. memory. It's all in there. And I love that. Um, the 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 use of the watch and the passing of time. Um, yeah. uh, is is the, there's a moment in that sort of there's, there's a, the motive of ticking. <laughs> And then when he stops yeah. it, and it sort of becomes almost like timeless for a period, it's sort of like you know, yeah. And then it's reintroduced, and it sort of it has that impact. And so I, you know, that was cool. And then so it, again, this this book has a pace because of that. Like you know, you feel the yeah. thing, but also you say about grief. One of the things I was I was quite, um, you know, this obviously is from the the young man's young boy's perspective, but his mother's yeah. obviously still there, and her response yeah. is there as well. And mm -hmm. and it's so and she's an artist and she wants to just create. Yeah. She goes into sort of like a mania of, of creation. Yeah. Um, Throwing yourself into your work. Basically. Yeah. And, and it, again, like I say, it feels sort of. I love it when he walks in and she's just hurling paint at a, at a canvas. <laughs> no, like, the canvas. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, "Let's create something." And I'm just like, "Oh man!" Like it. She's trying to be positive, but like I said, there's that mania there that sort of that Use, sort of yeah. And and so um, yeah, there's just so much in it. And I thought it's a fantastic book. Um, I found that so um, I thoroughly, I did, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like it was one of those I sort of because I've got it as a, as a PDF, and I was yeah. like, okay, I'll get through this. I'll sort of like it's going to take a bit of time because I, I, I struggle to read on computers at times. Yeah, literally done. Enough. And I was like, yeah, yeah do you know what I mean? I was sort of panning down. Brilliant. I loved it. So you know, I'm not, I, I keep gushing, and, and but it, it, th this is a book that I think. Um, it obviously has acted as a catharsis for you. Oh, massively. Yeah. Um, but I, I can see, and it, it tapped into things for me, and I can see that this is a yeah. universal book that, that people will yeah. be able to say, I have an experience like this. Because it's one thing, I always think that when you write, there's two truths. There's the truth, and there's a the universal truth. Yeah. Because the truth is something people can be have a bone of contention with. But the yeah. universal truth, and I think that, doesn't matter who you are, hopefully. <laughs> like, I just don't think, you know, everybody has that experience. That's why it's quite easy to talk about because it's absolutely something everybody experienced. Whether it's a gerbil yeah. or the grandparent or, you know, I'm going to say actually a dog or a cat because they live longer than gerbils. <laughs> like, yeah. basically. But they do become like family members, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's important to recognise that emotion you know and what it's going to mean further down mm. the line because it's a it's now a memory yes you know so it's an important no, thing to it, it is and it also so the introduce sort of introduction to the complex of the world and i think one of the things just to sort mm. of finish off like, this book also feels timely in the sense of yeah <laughs> uh, you know where we are in the state of the world at the moment with yeah. this idea of resistance and quiet resistance as well i would say against yeah um demagogues and, and dictatorship and so it, it just feels yeah it feels very prescient as well i didn't know if that was intentional but it just it just felt it. yeah it feels like um yeah definitely i think it, it's important that people find their way of expressing their voice and use it do it mm. you know say something it's really important you know i think it's yeah definitely for that as well yeah Will, will one one final question because this is a this obviously is, 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 is but this is still a world that exists. Would you ever revisit this world or these characters? I think I don't know. Um, I'm already working on something else where that did come up briefly, but I think it just it worked for this particular telling. Mm -hmm. You know, would I do more in that world? I don't know. Um, um, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It Which is fine. There's built, an answer now. This one, you're, you're for, this, to yeah. that story. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, not I everyone's read this was, one yet, so let's let's get everyone reading this one first. And then you think you can about do it, it. Like the, the land that is Le Debris is where it's set on, and the the idea of that debris mm. is its memories. It's the mm. fractured that archipelago that I kind of built up, or the sort of like half sunken Europe in a way. Uh, I was trying to. Um, sort of go okay my mental state of my memories looks like this and it's just a cluster of islands all over the place and yeah. i did imagine at one point being able to tell stories about stuff that's happened and use a location from it as well so it's potentially got that as well i wouldn't rule things out but i think um i think in my head i'm like this is the story this is done mm. you know this is that thing of when somebody says do you feel happy with the book yes and i think because of that it kind of in my mind it's like if i do it again i'll, I'll try something else yeah because it's really it has to be that it's in service to the story really mm. like you know it's got to have a, a form and function that kind of ties in and it served it for this um absolutely um so if i was doing it again it would have to be rhyme and reason to do yeah. it, you know. Yeah, this story has been told and sort of... Um, yeah. Yeah. No, wonderful, wonderful. Well, Brilliant. I, um, uh, cool, but it's been wonderful talking to you about this. I've been, and, and, you Thank know, you. Uh, a fusing about how, how much I enjoyed it, because it is... It is um, it is great. I recommend it. And, and there will be a written review of it going up as well uh, on 20th yeah. Century Geek. Uh, when's, it, when's it out? I haven't got my notes to me. It's behind. It's out. Um... It's delayed, like everything else, till December. But I think it's, I think the window is something like it's, it's before Christmas. It's somewhere like yeah. the seventh instead of the November. It's the same dates, but in December and it's something like seventh onwards. Right. I, I'll I double check. Yeah. I, will, I will double check with so my the next, comic stores. Get that, you know, direct market, and then obviously online after that. But I think it's it's somewhere about the seventh. I have to okay. double check that. Well, I will yeah. be putting note. There'll be a link down below. Um, to all the information about it and as I said there'll be a link as well to uh, 20th Century Geek for, for our review uh, so go check that out but Ian thank you oh Colbert thank you very much for coming on 20th yeah. Century Geek it's been fantastic uh, one day I will get you to talk about other things we might talk about things like Brink and other things that would uh... yeah <laughs> I will, I will... great um, but yes but for this that'd be week, great I'd... I'd be able to come on with Dan That'd be fantastic. If you can get Dan and both of you on, I would love that to talk about Brink. I mean, yeah, be... absolutely. I, we've got book six coming out. You have. I'm assuming book six is coming out now, but I'm not sure again because book delays before Christmas. There's a lot of them. So, yeah. You know, so I think generally across the board, I think everything is slightly behind. But it was meant to be out in November. I'm pretty sure it probably is. Uh, November. It is. Book, I think I'm, book yeah. six. I keep saying book six, book five. We're working on book six right now. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think there's a new one coming out because I've got I get the, the update. Um, yeah, we I will, I will reach out, we'll find out. There you go, it's on, it's on, it's evidence. You can hear it on record now. That's it. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. So go check it out. I will be linked to all this in the, in the, in the, in, and and Colbert will be back. Uh, and we'll talk about other things, but all the success with this book. I hope it's a successful, you know, it, it deserves to be. I hope people read it and I hope it affects them in the same way uh, it affected me because it's uh, it is it's a it's a book I think that you can uh, read and take many, many things from. Um, yeah, but yeah, Ian, uh, <laughs> deal. Fuck it. thank you very much. It doesn't matter, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. The title. It doesn't matter how you say it. Doesn't matter. We all get what you mean. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very thank much. You. And I hope you're enjoying what we're doing. If you're enjoying 20th Century Geek, let us know. Leave a review on your podcast catcher. But for now, uh, thank you very much. And we shall see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.